Shabbat Shalom. Shabbat Shalom. When I'm putting my children to sleep, sometimes I talk to them about their day, they tell me how their day went. And sometimes I talk to them about Judaism or even religious and spiritual matters. And they're always so full of questions. So this Parsha this week is a Parsha about the sons of Aaron who during the inauguration of a tabernacle, they rush in with a strange offering for strange uh, fire, the Torah says. And there, instead of God accepting their offering, God zaps them and they die. It's a very, a very uh, difficult story, but really a story about the power of holiness, right? The origin we've all seen in the Indiana Jones movie, um, but in the movie, the Nazis are trying to, to get a hold of the power of the ark. And at the end, they think it's going to help them, but the power of the ark doesn't. It kills the Nazis themselves, doesn't fulfill their purposes. I think the movie is powerful, but it, we have an intuitive sense that holiness in its most extreme form is very powerful. We, we sense that this could be true. When we're talking about the Ten Commandments or the Ark, we understand this can have a tangible force in the world, even though it's a movie, but there's something about it rings true, um, that there's something very mysterious when you get to that level of holiness. And it makes sense to us that that's what holiness is, except when we come to the synagogue. And there most of the time we think, well, holiness is just a nice feeling, right? We have nice feelings, like we have a nice feeling you know, when, we're, when, we, when we watch a funny movie, we laugh. When we watch a scary movie, what makes us scared sometimes. And then when we, go to, when, we, we, when we go to some place that's trying to evoke that feeling, it makes us feel holy. But the message of this whole part of the Torah is that holiness is more than just a feeling. It's something very real, a transformative power. And it has to be both respected and understood. We find the same message throughout the Torah. Not that many nice feelings in the Torah. And while we don't live with an actual ark and we don't have the Ten Commandments in our synagogues, but also invites us to see the work of religion um, with that type of respect and care. And what we're working towards is not just, not just poetry, but something very powerful and transformative and real that the power of the divine can be real. Um, and it can change the world by inspiring humans to acts unbelievable um, that can sweep through nations and change history, power human beings to great good, but also has to be treated with respect and demands high morals and ethics and how we approach it. And it's also a challenge to our, to our own individual lives um, to take seriously this power as a transformative force that we're inviting into it, a tangible reality that can transform how we live, how we do everything, that can move us in our hearts to love even the stranger, that can force us out of our own minds and self-interest to think about others, inspire us to devote of our time to help our community and the world. And if we approach our Jewish lives of that truth, how powerful it all can be. Shabbat Shalom.